Okay, so let's do an example where we figure out the rate law for a reaction that we are given using the method of initial rates. And so we are looking at the reaction where chlorine dioxide reacts with hydroxide to give chlorate, chlorine dioxide, and water. Now, some data was collected where we have various concentrations of chlorine dioxide and hydroxide, and the rate of the reaction was measured. So that's right here. Now, we want to figure out the rate law for this reaction. So let's remind ourselves about what the general rate law would look like. And so here is the general rate law for this reaction because we don't have all the information yet. Okay, so we have the rate is equal to the rate constant times the concentration of chlorine dioxide raised to some power, so that's the order of chlorine dioxide, and we're going to call that N because we don't know the value for that yet. And then we're going to multiply that by the concentration of hydroxide also to some power that we don't know yet, so the order of hydroxide, and that's the M power. So our goal here is to figure out what N and M are. And we're going to use this data in order to do that. Now, as I mentioned, this rate of the reaction right here, that is this rate. So this is the rate of the reaction under various concentrations of reactants. And that is in molar per second. And all of our concentrations for our reactants are also in molarity. All right, so how do we figure out these orders? So what we want to do is find reactions where the concentration of one reactant is varied and the other one is held constant and then we're going to look at the effect on the rate. And so let's look at chlorine dioxide first. So let's change the concentration of chlorine dioxide and keep hydroxide constant. So look at that table and find two experiments that fulfill that requirement. Okay, so if I'm looking at this table, then I see that experiments 1 and 3 keep hydroxide constant, and I look over at chlorine dioxide, and I find out that that concentration was doubled. So we double chlorine dioxide, and we hold hydroxide constant, and then we go over here, and we look at what happens to the reaction rate. So if we divide 1.04 divided by 0.62262, we're going to get something right around 4. It actually comes out to 3.969 if you do that division. So basically what that tells us is when we double the concentration, the rate of the reaction quadruples. So we double the concentration of chlorine dioxide and the rate goes up by four times. So that gives us enough information to figure out the order. So we have two times the concentration to some power and that's going to be equal to four times the rate. So I'm going to put in a four there and when we look at this relationship then the only number that makes sense, that makes this equality true, is 2. If we raise 2 to the second power, then that is equal to 4. And so this, the order of chlorine dioxide, is 2. So when we double the concentration of chlorine dioxide, the reaction rate goes up by 4. And that tells us that this reaction is second order in chlorine dioxide. Okay, so now we have a little bit more information to put in our, into our equation. So we have rate is equal to K chlorine dioxide to the second power. We still don't know hydroxide. So let's find two experiments where we vary the concentration of hydroxide, but we hold the concentration of chlorine dioxide constant. Okay. 
And there are actually two different reactions that you can use, your choice. And I'm going to go ahead and pick three and four, but you could also use one and two. So here is three and four. We find that we have chlorine dioxide constant. We have doubled, so we have experiment two where we have 0.02 molar. If we double that to 0.04 molar in experiment three, then we look at what happens to the rate. So between experiment four and then looking at experiment three, we find that if we double the concentration of hydroxide and hold chlorine dioxide constant, then we roughly double the, the rate of the reaction. So we're going to double hydroxide and the rate doubles. So if we set up an equation the same way, then we can see that if we double the concentration of hydroxide and it doubles the reaction rate, then we can see that the only thing that makes sense again in here is that M is equal to one. So hydroxide, so this reaction is first order in hydroxide. So M is equal to one and it's because when we double the concentration, the rate doubles. So let's go ahead and add that to our rate law. Now I'm going to put a one there, but often we just leave it off and just put in the concentration of hydroxide. So this is the general rate law for this reaction. Now we know the rate law. Now we can use this rate law to figure out the rate constant using some of the data in the table. And that's what we're going to do in the next video. We'll figure out the value for the rate constant in part two of this video.